Cucurbits are a very diverse group of crops. From squash to melons, cucumbers and gourds, about a dozen of 800 species in this family of plants have been domesticated. The productive vines of these plants grow along the ground and many can be trained to climb trellises, which appeals to gardeners. The wide variety in shapes, colors, textures, and flavors of cucurbit fruits provides many opportunities for creative combinations. These can be achieved in a few easy steps. Cucurbits belong to the family Cucurbitaceae, and although they are closely related, only some domesticated species can interbreed. The scientific name for the cucumber is Cucumis sativus, and it is diploid with seven pairs of chromosomes. It originated in India and can cross with its wild relative, Cucumis sativus variety Hardwickii. Cucumis milo, the true melon, includes fruits such as the muskmelon, cassaba, cantaloupe, and honeydew. It is diploid with 12 pairs of chromosomes, although some varieties are tetraploid with four copies of each chromosome. It originated in Persia, and breeders are working on finding compatible wild relatives. Citrullus linatus, the watermelon, is diploid with 11 pairs of chromosomes. This originated in Africa and can still cross with its wild relative, Citrullus colosynthus, also known as the bitter apple or desert melon. There are four species of cultivated cucurbits that are interfertile, owing to the fact that they are all diploid with 20 pairs of chromosomes. They originated in the Americas about 8 to 10,000 years ago and bear so many similarities that they are often collectively called the squash or pumpkins. Cucurbita pipo is the summer squash and includes the zucchini, crookneck, acorn, and spaghetti squash. The wild relatives include Cucurbita pipo variety Texana, the Texas gourd, and Cucurbita fraterna. Cucurbita maxima is the winter squash and includes the buttercup, hubbard, banana squash, and the giant pumpkins. It evolved from a wild species called Cucurbita maxima subspecies Andriana. Cucurbita moshada includes butternut squash, the calabaza, and some pumpkins, but its wild ancestor remains unknown. Cucurbita argirosperma is the Kusha pumpkin and evolved from Cucurbita argirosperma sororia. Another wild relative that it can cross with is Cucurbita argirosperma palmieri. Lufa aegyptiaca, the Lufa gourd, is diploid with 13 pairs of chromosomes. This gourd, valued for its spongy seed matrix, originated in India. Despite the variation between these species, their reproductive systems are essentially the same. Cucurbits are diclinous because they have separate male and female flowers. Cucurbits are also monoecious because both male and female flowers are found on each plant. Some varieties of cucumber may have only female flowers, so they are called gynoecious. And some melon varieties can also be andromonoecious, with both male flowers and bisexual flowers that have male and female parts. The two flower types are easy to identify. Female flowers have an organ called the ovary at their base, which develops into the fruit after pollination. Inside the female flower is an ornate stigma that receives the pollen. The male flowers do not have an ovary and have up to five anthers fused together which produce the pollen. In some cucurbit species, the male flowers may present themselves on long pedicels. Since the male flowers are the first to emerge, they attract bees and other pollinating insects which become coated with pollen to be transferred to the female flowers. Because insects are difficult to control, cucurbit breeders often bring their plants inside into a greenhouse where controlled pollinations can be made. Cucurbit plants may have many branches, so removing a few as the plant grows can help keep your greenhouse from becoming overgrown. Cucurbits are among the easiest of crosses to make. You will need twist ties to make crosses, a knife to cut open the fruits, and a strainer with a few small containers to collect your seeds. 
Labeled tags and a permanent marker can help you keep track of your crosses down the road. Cucurbit crosses are best done in the morning when the plants are the most receptive to being pollinated. Begin by selecting a new male flower that is producing pollen and remove it from the plant. Carefully remove the petals without touching the anthers. Then select a newly opened female flower. Place the male flower inside of the female flower, just touching the anthers and stigma together. With your other hand, bring a twist tie over the petals and gently clamp it down. Folding the tie over itself at the end will hold it in place. Some breeders will use a paintbrush to transfer pollen from one plant to many flowers, but it is difficult to clean between crosses. Now that you are finished with your cross, you should label it. Some breeders use color-coded twist ties, but the most common and versatile way to keep track of your cross is with a marking tag. First write the female parent, and then the male parent. Don't forget to write the date. Gently tie it below the flower. As the fruits grow, it is also a good idea to label them with a permanent marker in case they fall off of the plant. When the fruits are fully ripe, in this case yellow, Remove them from the vine and set them aside for a week so the seeds can mature. When you are ready to collect the seeds from your fruits, cut them open with a knife and scrape the seeds into the strainer. Take care to cut only through the outer flesh of the fruit to avoid damaging your seeds. Rinse them with water and place them in an open container to dry. Some cucurbit species may require fermenting the seeds for a day to release them from the stringy flesh that holds them inside the fruit. When the seeds are dry, put them in labeled bags to be planted the next year. On a larger scale, controlled crosses for hybrid seed production can be made out in the field. Seed producers will plant two parental lines in isolation and bring in hives of bees to pollinate them. To ensure that every seed came from a cross between the two parents, breeders remove the male flowers from the female parent before they open. Alternately, they can use gynecious plants as female parents or treat the female parent with a hormone that suppresses male flowers and increases the number of female flowers. Either of these methods can save time and ensure that the seeds are hybrids of the two parents. Also, in order to self-pollinate and maintain gynecious varieties, Breeders can artificially induce male flowers by treating the plants with another compound. These methods give seed producers many robust options for making hybrid seeds. Particularly noteworthy is the seedless watermelon, which was first developed in the 1950s and is very popular today. To develop a seedless watermelon variety, a diploid seedling is treated with a compound called colchicine. This doubles the number of chromosomes in the plant, turning it into a tetraploid. This is then used as a female parent to cross with another diploid, producing triploid seeds with three copies of each chromosome. These triploids can develop and produce fruit, but the odd number of each chromosome causes problems when the cells undergo meiosis to produce eggs and pollen. As a result, the seeds in the fruits do not develop. In order to grow seedless watermelons, farmers plant one-fourth of their fields with a normal diploid variety known as a pollenizer to pollinate the sterile triploids. Although watermelon breeders have to evaluate two parental lines after they've been combined as a triploid, and farmers have to leave space in their fields for a pollenizer, the extra effort it takes to make seedless watermelons is worth it. These various techniques are used by breeders throughout the world to create the many acres of diverse cucurbits that we all enjoy.